so you said you find the Christian religion attractive. And I can remember a time in life when I felt the same way. I, I grew up in a country where, you know, I was in a public school, but we had a Methodist minister come by and sing us um, songs and tell us Bible stories. And I, I thought, this is fun. This is nice. I like these stories. I like these songs. He plays the button accordion pretty well. And um, so I remember once I was walking down the stairs after one of these classes, and I asked my, one of my classmates, I said, do you believe in God? And he said, yes. And I said, how do you do it? And so attractiveness doesn't cut it for me. So how do you do it? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so to be, uh, you know, to be fully honest, as anybody... Uh, should be, they struggle, right? So there's nothing, there's no, I cannot imagine a particular time that I would say if they experience this particular moment, they would immediately be a Christian as well. So it's, it's a struggle in terms of understanding, um, uh, in terms of reading. And for example, if, if the Bible really was a, a set of truths, uh, historically it was given to us by God, then it should be a beautiful literary document. And so I try to read it as such, and it is. It's truly beautiful. So it's small pieces of evidence that, that are built up. And I think, to me, it's, it's, it's sort of three pieces. One, it's a personal, it has been a personal walk. Uh, my life has changed in small ways that I can say, yes, there's something real about this thing. Two, it's a communal walk, that if I'm the only person believing this thing, then that would put up red flags in my mind, right? So it's personal, it's communal, but if those things are the only two things, that's again dangerous, there must be reason. So I think the, the part that I find attractive that I want to talk about today was, was the reason part. So I think the three of them pushed me in the, in the right way. So Bill, one of the things that attracted me, as I just said, was about injustice and justice and sort of there is, as, as you mentioned, like, you know, there's nobody above you. We are, you know, in, th in terms of uh, existentialism and things like this. And, and the fact that I find that there's a God that is good above me, I have a sense of letting my guard down when it comes to, in a good way, when it comes to justice. If somebody cuts me off on the road, as a small example, we all know we want to follow that person right there, don't we? <laughs> you know? How dare you cut me off, right? So, uh, um, and... But even in an extreme case, like some harm being done to your family, to your daughters, or even an extreme, like genocide, how, what are your thoughts about sort of injustice and, and working with resolving those issues? Well, I think injustice is bad. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm opposed to it as well. <laughs> um, and... This sort of bears on the question of moral reasoning that we were talk that I sort of b alluded to briefly uh, in, in in my remarks. Um, so my feeling about moral reasoning is that it's actually not that hard most of the time to figure out what's right and what's wrong. I mean, people struggle and act as if it's a big deal most of the time. And of course, every now and then you'll have some really complex moral dilemma, right, that you can't figure out. Mostly in day-to-day -day life, it's not hard to decide what's right or wrong. What's really hard is doing what's right and what's wrong. Because most of the time your moral reasoning leads you to a conclusion that you should do something that you don't really want to do, like not chase after the guy, right? <laughs> um, so my feeling about religion is that it doesn't particularly help one way or the other in that regard. Uh, there are people who do the right thing because religion gives them the strength to do the right thing, right? But equally, there are people who do the wrong thing because they can find a religious justification to it. And I'm, I'm happy to call it a wash, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sure. laughs> All right. So, so I just had... <laughs> that, yeah. that was the other atheist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but so... Um, <laughs> So, so, so I, I, I guess what I would say, I just want to finish up, finish up that thought a little bit. Um, there's nothing like not having a God for making you take responsibility for your actions yourself. It focuses your mind, okay, it's basically up to me and it's not going to happen. So I find strength yeah. from uh, realizing that it's, uh, that it's my responsibility to do the right thing. So can I clarify one thing? Sure. So um, I don't mean, that, that's perfect, I, I, I agree with you. I don't mean... Um, I don't mean your personal struggles. I just mean, is there, what do you think about the injustice that happens? In other words, will it, you know, will, will it ever be set right? Will somebody judge those who have done wrong and gotten away with it? That, that's, what, that's what I was trying to get at. Not the per I agree with you that, you know, somebody could be a good person. Right. You know, without I religion. mean, I don't know. 
Okay. You know, I don't know what the future holds. Um, of course, in my belief system, yeah, right. they will eventually just die. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that'll be the end of it for them. <laughs> for more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.